Hi guys, this is Brandon Miller here with the second part of my Adobe Air-based RSS reader. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention in the prerequisites is that you have to be uh, pretty well aware of CSS and XHTML to make this work. The very first thing that we do here is we start with the parse RSS function. That's what's called when the uh, RSS catcher URL loader is completely done. Um, the very first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to assign RSS XML, a new variable, to be equal to the data that was loaded into RSS Catcher. So in this case it would be the RSS XML that was loaded into it. That's now going to be stored here to RSS XML variable. And w the very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my RSS channel information. And uh, the channel, if you take a look at the RSS feed from Adam's site and from almost every other site, is going to be a child of your main XML, the RSS XML. There's going to be a child in there called channel. Sometimes there's going to be more than one. So for this instance, I only want to get the first one. So I'm going to call RSS.child channel. And this little ditty right here, zero. And that means the very first instance of this channel because what this is doing is this is actually returning an array with all of the channels in it and all I want is the first channel so I'm gonna call RSS XML dot child channel the very first object in that array so that's what my RSS channel XML is next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my RSS title and what that is is that's going to be a child of the channel named title so the RSS channel XML has a child named title which I'm going to assign the value of to my variable RSS title. Same thing goes here for RSS description. The uh, channel also has something in it called description this is the node name. I'm going to assign the value of that to my RSS description variable. The copyright also a node name of copyright inside of your RSS channel here the very first channel in this instance or it could be any other channel that you want to make it but it would be that copyright the um, the next one is going to be the link and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call child.image and in Adam's RSS he has a node labeled image that has a child inside of that node labeled link and that contains the href so rather than setting a variable that I'm not going to use, I just combine the two right here into one by calling RSS channel XML dot child image. So I get the image node and then I just continue on and get the link child of that image child. Um, it's not really an image, it's a node that contains an image and the link and what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing that link. The last thing that I do is I grab all of my items from my RSS channel. There's a whole bunch of them in there, so what this does is this actually creates an array. And uh, it drops it right in here. It's a beautiful thing to do. Now all of this information that I gathered right here, this is all for my channel. This doesn't have to do with my, my individual items. I'm going to do the very same thing to get my item title along with my item link and my item copyright, my item description, further on down in a loop as I go through this item array. Um, but for right now, I need to name my channel, and that's what I have done with all of these. Um, so in order to get everything set up, i got to set up the styles the way I want it to show on my page. Um, I'm going to start RSS style, and I'm going to have that set to this group of CSS right here. Um, this is pretty basic. You could set it up however you want. I set up my links so that they're pointers, and that's just my style now. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my RSS content variable and that's going to be a div here with the ID of RSS title for my CSS and then I'm going to drop in my RSS title which is this right up here for the title of the channel. Um, and then of course the description of the channel inside of another div and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a link and it's going to be linking for the copyright. So when you click on the copyright you'll go back to Adam's website. Okay, now I set up a for loop to iterate through all of my RSS items, which I grabbed right here, RSS items equals RSS channel XML child dot item. This is an array of all of the items inside of my RSS channel. And uh, I set it up with a horizontal rule. I break it right here, so there's a nice line break right there. Um, I set my class on my div for that. I set a nice on click document dot location. So that's a, a JavaScript link to go to wherever I want to go to. 
Um, that'll just, you know, it's like an href. It's the same thing. It's just done in JavaScript. And then what I do here is I do RSS items A. So in this for loop, you can see I have variable A equals zero. A is less than RSS items dot length. So while A is less than RSS items dot length, which is all of the children in the RSS items, then I'm going to add one to A. So here I'm going to get this child node, which is this looped number, I'm going to get that child node of the RSS items. And I'm going to add the link in here because this is my link div. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add inside of that link, I'm going to add the title. So what's happening here is the title, right here, RSS items A dot child title, is going to link to RSS items A dot child link. And that link is an href. So this whole link here inside of this div is going to take me to this specific entry. It's like going to one blog entry, only for Adam it's going to one tutorial entry. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in my description. That's going to be inside of its own div, which also has the description style on it. And that's basically it. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is as soon as I start to do all of this stuff, I'm going to take my loading animation off. My loading animation can just go away when I'm done the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, my RSS display, which is that HTML loader, if you remember. I'm going to tell that to load a string of HTML. That's what this means. Load a string of HTML. Don't actually load a different page or anything like that. Just load what I'm giving you to load. And so the HTML loader, RSS display, is going to load the string, the HTML string, of RSS style, which is my style sheet that I created right here in the flash for you guys and I'm going to add along with that my RSS content. This right here, my channel information and my loop of all of the items that I also added to the stage. The next thing that I'm going to do is show you the, the scroll bar function here and I talked about how I had to do a little bit of a workaround to get my scroll bars to work with an HTML loader. Well this is my workaround here. What I did was I did content scroll bar dot set scroll properties RSS display dot height, so the height of the scroll bar is going to be the same height as my HTML loader, which is RSS display. And right here what I do is I set the scrollable area or the excess amount. I'm going to take the actual height, RSS display dot content height, the actual height of my RSS information that I've loaded into that HTML pane. Not what's visible, but what's actually inside of it, including the invisible stuff. And I'm going to subtract the height of my HTML loader pane here and what that's going to do is that's going to give me the real height of my HTML information minus the displayed height. So what this is going to set is my extra scrollable area and um, the very last number that I put in here is a 100, that's how many lines that it scrolls at a time or how many pixels that it scrolls at a time. It uh, it scrolls 100 every click of the scroll bar or every move of the scroll bar. It's 100. And then um, for my scroll feed, this is the event that's called when I click on the scroll button. Right here, content.scrollbar, add event listener, event.scroll. What that is is when I scroll, it's going to run my scroll feed function. And for that, I'm going to do RSS display dot scroll v, which is the current scroll position of my RSS display is going to be equal to content bar dot scroll position. So I'm going to grab the scroll position of the content bar, which I set to be relational to my HTML loader right here. I'm going to set the HTML loader scroll position to be the scroll position of the scroll bar. So as the scroll bar scrolls, so will my RSS HTML loader. And that's going to make everything move. So in a real brief overcap, what I did was I set up my XML with all of the data that was loaded by my URL loader for the RSS. I then grabbed the channel and I set that to be a channel XML. I then went through my channel XML, grabbed my title, my description, and my copyright along with my link, and I set those to their own variables. I then grabbed all of the items right here RSS channel XML dot child dot item, grabbed all of the items, put them in an array, which this does automatically. I then set my style for my RSS, and I set my content. I dropped in all of my channel information first, 
and then I made a loop which went through all of the items here, RSS content, for later loading into the HTML loader item. I removed my animation by setting visible equals false, and then I told my HTML loader, which is RSS display, to load the HTML string of my styles that I created along with all of the content that I generated from that XML. I also set up my scroll bar here with the uh, the height and of the displayed area along with the actual height of all of the extra area and then I set up my scroll function to make the position of my HTML loader be relative to the position of my scroll bar. That's basically everything there was. Um, I hope you guys could follow it. It's really not all that difficult. If you had any issues with the prerequisites or just not being able to understand any of the stuff that was going on in here, you can feel free to um, post it in the forums.